Hello, Regal Radio fans and movie fans alike. My name is Kyle Means, lead editor for WeAreRegalRadio.com, and this is David Evans, one of our lead contributors. Today, we're filming a very special video feature for the website. Uh, we're speaking on the 86th Annual Academy Awards, one of the biggest nights in film and in entertainment period. The awards are coming up this weekend, and we just wanted to give our thoughts on the big night and the you know, all the great movies that have been nominated this year, the individuals that we think are going to win, the people who maybe should have got nominated and all that. You know, Dave has written a lot of uh, great articles on movies for us this year, and we wanted him to give his thoughts on the big night. So here he is, David. Hello, hello everybody. Um, well, we're going to start out with going the traditional Oscar style, starting out with the Best Actress and Supporter and Role. And with that, we have starting out with Sally Hawkins from Blue Jasmine with Woody Allen. Uh, we also have Jennifer Lawrence from American Hustle. We have Lupita Nyong'o from 12 Years a Slave. We have Julia Roberts from August Osage County. And we have June Squibb from Nebraska with Bruce Dern. Now, my favorite out of the uh, five is uh, Lupita, Lupita Nyong'o from 12 Years a Slave. I believe she gave an excellent performance and she most uh, deserves the uh, nomination. So, however, I do find, however, there's a lot of people who've been um, pushing for Jennifer Lawrence to win a no nomination, so we'll see. Uh, moving on to actor, uh, best actor in supporting role, we have Barkad Abadi and Captain Phillips. Uh, we have Bradley Cooper from American Hustle. We have Ma Michael Fassbender from 12 Years a Slave. We have Jared, Jared Leto from Dallas Buyers Club. And we have Jonah Hill from Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, Jared Leto from from Dallas Buyers Club is what made had an amazing role in his performance as Rayvon as the transgender prostitute, and he's already got nominated from the Screen Actors Guild amongst other uh, film reviewers. So it seems he's one of my favorite picks as well. He it seems like you know you, you, this is a good uh, good category overall though. You look at Bakada Body. He was very great in that role in uh, Captain Phillips. Bradley Cooper was very entertaining, and then Michael Fassbender was very uh, immersive in his role as well. Most definitely, most definitely. I think the reason, well, the reason why, I can't speak for the Screen Actors Guild, but the reason why my nomination is with Jerry Leto, I think what the difference between um, Leto and the other actors that are nominated is that he you know, was transformative. He would essentially transform to himself to be to take on that role uh, physically so that's why my nomination stands with uh, Lido. And going back just right quick to the, the, the supporting actress uh, it does seem like that Nyong'o and Lawrence are the two favorites how much you've seen both roles uh, and like both of their roles but how much of a separation do you have between those two? The separation that I have between those two is that uh, Nyong'o uh, incorporated a great deal of uh, pathos um, into her performance as Patsy, the uh, strong female slave in 12 years. Um, the diff Jennifer Lawrence um, playing a woman who in reality was much older than herself um, was uh, definitely entertaining and engaging. Uh, however, I think, like I said, I think the issue would not when nominations come, who, depending on who wins, the element of transformation uh, is always what gets my vote. You also got to factor in, though, that you know, Oscar has his favorites, and Lawrence is just coming off of a big win last year for Best Actress, so that may be a, a, an advantage for her. But I agree with you with uh, Nyong'o. She did pro provide the best performance in that category, and it would be nice to see... Uh, what would be, I believe, the fourth uh, uh, fourth woman of color, uh, African American or African uh, this, uh, uh, background, to win that category? But uh, now we're going on to the lead actor and actress nominations. Starting with the actress nominations, and uh, again another tight contest here. What, what, uh, can you give us the nominations? Oh yeah, there's a Amy Adams in American Hustle. There's Clay Kate Blanchett in Blue Jasmine. There's Sandra Bullock in Gravity. There's Judy Dench in Philomena. And Meryl Streep in August Osage County. Uh, my pick of the five is Amy Adams in American Hustle. Um, her, her playing essentially two different characters, uh, Sidney Prosser and Edith Greensley, is the reason what separates her from the, the lot. 
it's all all distinguished actresses in that category too. It seems that a lot of heat is being put on uh Kate Blanchett as well and uh Sandra Bullock for uh, Blue Jasmine and Gravity respectively. I have to I, I have to say I've seen Gravity. I think uh Bullock did do a, a very exceptional job on there. I do like Adam's performance a little bit better. But uh that so that's a good pick there. But it seemed like Blanchett is, in the media is getting a lot of attention for Blue Jasmine. Uh, and go the actor. Um, yes, leading act, actor in uh, leading role, we have Christian Bale in American Hustle, we have Bruce Dern in Nebraska, we have Leonardo DiCaprio in The Wolf of Wall Street, we have Chewito Eji Four in 12 Years a Slave, and we have Matthew McConaughey in Dallas Buyers Club. It's, this category is definitely difficult for me because I'm definitely favors of Matthew McConaughey as well as Chewito Eji Four, um, the, as well as uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. I think, I believe, like I said, the element here to look at is the issue of transformation. And so for my pick would ultimately end up going to Matthew McConaughey um, playing the uh, Ron Woolfolk who contracts AIDS and essentially buy, illegally buys med, um, AIDS medicine to um, help himself and other people who are afflicted with AIDS in his community. I think, uh, you know, Chiwetel definitely would, is a big uh a favorite for a lot of people as well, though it seems like McConaughey is the favorite overall in the category. But can you speak a little bit on your thoughts on Chiwetel's performance as uh, as uh, Solomon Northrup? And and I also uh, like what would you what do you think of his performance in regards to the other you know uh, black actors who have been in this position in recent years, like Jamie Foxx and Will Smith and uh, Denzel Washington, who you know. Fox and Washington, of course, have won the best actor, and she would tell is uh, could be in position to do it as well. Edgy, I mean, this is and this will put and this will put um, Edgy for at a disadvantage because he is an excellent actor, and he definitely deserves to win for best actor as well. If there was an option, if there was an opportunity to have two winners, like I said back again, what puts my what puts. Um, McConaughey is a favorite for me over Edgy for is the issue of transformation. Um, he dropped, he is essentially dropped down to about 130 pounds to play Ron Woolfolk, and that's the reason why he gets my vote over Edgy for. But Edgy for is definitely an excellent actor. His body of work speaks for his previous body of work speaks for itself. But do you, but do you think that the role that he, the role that he did in Solomon North was? Do you think is? Uh, you know, if he got it, do you think it's, it's worthy of an Oscar? Yes, it most definitely is worthy of an Oscar. 12 Years a Slave is an amazing film. It is an honest, accurate treatment of the account of Solomon Northup's life. And it's definitely uh, Oscar worthy. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about the film overall as we get to the best picture in a little bit. But uh, let's go now to best director. Yes. Best director. Um, nominees for best director includes David Russell for American Hustle. Um, Alfonso Cuaron, Cuaron for Gravity, uh, Alex Payne for Nebraska, Steve McQueen for 12 Years a Slave, and Leonardo, De I'm sorry, Martin Scorsese for Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, why uh, 12 Years a Why Steve McQueen is the uh, best director? McQueen, in, in all of his film treatments, has shown an un honest treatment of his subject matter. It's a very, it's all of his films from Shame, which deals with sex addiction, with uh, Hunger, uh, which deals with, um, which treats the Bobby Sands, the uh, IRA uh, soldier who was um, locked up. At, um, they all deal with just honest treatments. There's no glorifying of the subject, there's no glorifying romanticizing of the subject matter. And I think in Hollywood, there is a, too much of a, too much of a, predilection towards um, whitewashing, so to speak, the subject matter. And that's what uh, I appreciate about, appreciate about McQueen is just his honest depiction of whatever his subject matter is. And, uh, you know, that's that goes to the heart of what is makes 12 Years a Slave significant. It is, you know, the realest, most unvarnished uh, tale of slavery, American slavery, in uh, film history. And it seems like there are so many moments in the film where McQueen just lets, lays his camera out there and lets you take in fully what the, uh, you know, the astonishment of uh, brutality, both mentally and physically, that uh, was being done to uh, you know, African Americans at that time. And uh, yeah, it it's definitely would be great to see McQueen get that, get that nod. Most definitely. 
So uh, moving on now, the big one, Best Picture. Uh, quite a few nominees here, uh, more than the typical five. Uh, they've been sort of expanding the Best Picture uh, uh, best picture category in recent years to reflect more films that people saw as popular and as accomplished throughout the year. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nominations this year. Dave, uh, can you go over? It's going to be a tight race. Uh, definitely. Uh, American Hustle, Captain Phillips, Dallas Buyers Club, Gravity, Her, Nebraska, Philomena, 12 Years a Slave, and The Wolf of Wall Street. Now, up until... Tw- 12 Years a Slave is still the most, most, is still overall my favorite film of the pick. There's definitely a lot of contenders. Um, But like I said, my pick still stays with 12 Years a Slave. It was an excellent film. It had excellent directing, cinematography, um, acting, of course. So 12 Years a Slave is my pick. I mean, it's, it's so interesting, especially in a year like this, because... You know, we're talking in a war show here, and there can be a lot of different biases. There can be a lot of different things that go involved in the way that people vote. You you talk about the amount of money that is put into campaigns. You know, people put in, uh, you know, uh, the the say the excuse me, the Academy receives the different films as uh, to be viewed. You know, pe- different people view them. Different people see the the viral campaigns and uh, traditional print campaigns and magazines that go along to you know for your consideration. You know, stuff like that. And it seems like a lot of these movies bring different things to the table. When you look at Twelve Years a Slave, you're talking about a harrowing depiction of American slavery, the most harrowing depiction ever. You look at a film like American Hustle. It's very again, it's based on true to life. Uh, things, but it's, it goes in a very creative way in telling this uh, true to life story. You know, it, does, it incorporates a lot of comedy, it incorporates a lot of uh, feats of fantasy and stuff like that, too. You have other movies like uh, Captain Phillips and D- Dallas Buyers Club that are sort of documentary in the way that they approach, again, real life subjects. And you have a film like Her, which is really off the, the beaten path in, as far as this subject matter, you know, a guy being in love with a uh, operating system. So, in The Wolf of Wall Street, too, another true-to-life tale that just goes all, way off the page and, and all these big-time performances, uh, you know. It, it's it's going to be really interesting to see that just where the heart of people, you know, where people go and where uh, they're really interested in as far as uh, championing, uh, championing a best picture. But all, a lot of these pictures, maybe all of them, you know, we haven't seen all of them, I think. A couple of them we missed, but, but we've seen most of them. And... Uh, uh, this is, like I said, I, I, I could go with like American Hustle, Gravity, and, and 12 Years, and Wolf of Wall Street. I wouldn't mind seeing any of them, either of them win, but I, I'm with you, Dave. The, my heart was, goes with uh, 12 Years a Slave because it was the most important movie of the year, the most well done movie of the year, and it would be a, 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 it'll be a historical moment. The first time a black director uh, would have held the best picture, first time, you know, a, a cast of that sort receive that sort of award so we gotta you know uh, cross our fingers for that one Most definitely. so we've gone through the nominations and uh you know like i say it's gonna be pretty interesting and entertaining not regardless but it's i think especially if you're a, a fan of certain movies uh or, or you come from a certain perspective you feel that there was some people who were snubbed and who you know you would like to see uh figured into this whole big night as well I personally, uh, I would lead my big snubs off with Fruitvale Station. It was another movie that was quite amazing in the way it depicted a significant event in American, uh, recent American history, uh, a violent act that occurred in uh, in, in Oakland, the shooting of uh, Oscar Grant, and the uh, performance at that at the center of that one, Michael B. Jordan. You know, he's he's become a big star over this year, but I think. His, his year should have been capped off with an Oscar nomination. Uh, Dave, I think you would agree with me on that one. Uh, yes. What do you think about that and any other snub that you got? Uh, my, my, the two films that I felt were most snubbed by the Oscars uh, was Fruitvale Station, uh, directed by Ryan Coogler, uh, his first film. Uh, it starred um, Michael B. Jordan, Octavia Spencer, and Melody Diaz. Um, Jordan played um, Oscar Grant, the uh, slain 20 one-year-old uh, African-American male at the uh, bar station uh, shot while uh, 
shot while handcuffed essentially in 2009. Uh, Octavia Spencer as Grant's mother gave an excellent performance as well as Melanie Diaz as his girlfriend. They both gave excellent performances. Um, they also, the other movie that I well, was snubbed was Lee Daniels' The Butler, um, which was which gave excellent was which had excellent performances by Forrest Whitaker as well as Oprah Winfrey, and uh, and a, ca a cast of supporting actors that also gave made it an excellent film, and it essentially detailed the uh, life of. Um, Ernest Gaines, the uh, White House partner to several presidents, and using the civil rights movement essentially as its backdrop. It definitely should have gotten nominated. It, it goes to show what type of a year this was in film, how much of a crowded uh, quality year it was in film where you know performances like that and uh, get left out. Mentioning Coogler too, I thought and Coogler was a good bet too. You know when Fruitvale first came out because. You have like 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 I mentioned before, certain narratives sort of arise from around performances and stuff. And Coogler being a first-time director and winning a big like that movie did and uh, Sundance a year ago. That's you know Sundance often is a first uh, first sign of great films to come over over the course of a year. For, uh, Fruitvale Station won the two major awards at that film festival, and you know, of course went on to you know get a lot of attention, but it didn't you know. Uh, didn't stay as far as the Oscars go. Cougar, I thought was going to be something like uh, uh, John Singleton, because you know John Singleton, uh, he earned a Best Director nomination for his first film, which of course was the classic Boys in the Hood. And um, but you know it didn't happen, and still I think a lot of good things are, are to come for people like Ryan Cougar and Michael B. Jordan. They're young brothers out there doing big things. So. Um, just to wrap up, I guess, this segment, um, anything else that you think is interesting about, you know, the Oscars or, or film in general this year? Like, like we said, you've done a lot of good writing on film this year. Just that, and you, and you know, I know you love film a lot. So what, what is your take overall on films this year and, and looking forward? What do you think that it meant? It's in particular, being such a big year for films directed by black people, starring black people, produced by black people. Like this, this hopefully, you no. Know, there's been moments like this before, and they've sort of faded away. But I, I think this really could have been a year where we've established that there are different voices in Hollywood, and that they can flourish if they're given the right support. Uh, hopefully so. I mean, and the outcome of the Oscars will definitely reflect that if that's the, you know, if that's the case. You know. Yeah, that's it. that's definitely gonna be the case. I think, like I say, so that's that's why I get a lot of a lot of <laughs> brothers and sisters gonna be uh, keeping their fingers crossed for twelve years. But uh, that's basically it. You know, uh, if you haven't seen any of these movies, go catch them. Uh, I, I recommend them highly. And if you haven't read any of Dave's previous work on WeAreRegalRadio.com, dot com, go back and go back and read it, man. He's doing a lot of great things on there. We have a lot of other great things as well. Again, check us out. We are RegalRadio.com, at Regal Radio one on Twitter. And that should be it. We'll, uh, hopefully we'll have another video special soon for you. And uh, you know, keep, <laughs> keep your eye on the prize or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> we out.